Okay, so where we left off yet last time was we had roughly shaped the uh, the side view of the the face and the front view. So let's go just go over that for a second. So you can see that uh, if you take a look at the uh, diagram here, that she's got a forehead, and then there's a dip in for where the uh, just below the brow where the eye would be sitting and then a uh, kind of a pooky nose and then uh, we, we carved or I carved it straight down just to create and try and find where the jawline is so you can see the exact same thing has applied here a curvature there the nose comes out and then straight down and there's the chin going back underneath there so that's one view so you get the one view set up and then you get the other view set up. So there we are. So you can see that she's got kind of a, a round face. Um, and then it, depending on how young she is, um, you can taper this in on both sides. And that creates the jawline, which comes across, and then the bottom of the chin. So here we are here. You can see there's more work needs to be done here in order to knock this in a little bit more on, on 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 particularly on this side here, and then come in and, and create the the width of the of the chin down here at the bottom. So we're going to uh, mark that on uh, so that we don't lose those features. So uh, on the diagram, you can see that the chin more or less comes to a point. We're going to shorten it a little bit. So that then we can create the, the jawline coming up on both sides. And you can see where the jawline comes, it's fairly flat. And if you want, you can draw a line straight across there so that you don't lose, you keep maintain the symmetry. That's the where it is. Is that the level with the hair that what you have there? Um, we're not up to the hair yet. Well, no, oh, this hair here you're talking about. Yeah, well, you can see in the diagram exactly where it, it lines up with the hair, can't you? Yeah. And so, level with the hair or above, it doesn't matter, more or less the same. And if I tilt that up, you can see that it's more or less the same. So then we got to taper the side here a little bit. And so we're going to taper both sides. And I don't know whether these are going to be in the right spot or not, but give you the idea that that has to be tapered. And that goes up to the nose, if you want to use it as landmarks, the nose would be your dividing line there as to where the that taper would be on both sides. So it's important that we establish the parameters of the, the side of the face, looking up, get that profile, and then when you're looking straight in to find the, the angles of the face. Because once you get them set, then Everything else kind of falls into place. So we'll stop, I'll stop it there and we'll... Uh, uh, so there it is done. And what I did was I used this gouge here. It's a number 5, 20 millimeter. And I used it to shape. And I shaped the, I shaped the uh, chin first and then worked my way up. So now I, I can see that my, the side of my face on both sides is a little bit too wide. And you can use either a number three or a number five to go in and turn it the other way so that you create the roundness in the, in the side of the face. See how it's round on the side of the face? So you, if you turn your, so the bottom half, I did it with the gouge uh, concave and then I'm going to take it, turn it inside out, I guess, and so that I can create that shape up there. And I'll just try and get the symmetry on both sides, try and get it narrowed down a little bit. So there it is with the both sides set up. Might have to take a little bit more off this side to bring the symmetry in. I'll remove those shatter pieces there now. Okay, so the next, the most important feature here is at this stage you've got to make sure that the face is all nicely rounded. and. Uh, um, get the particularly get the cheeks and the lower jaw turned so that we got a nice round shape coming across here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but get it 
more or less round and try and keep the symmetry so that both sides look relatively the same. So now I'll say it once and I'll say it twice. The nose anchors the face. The nose anchors the face. So the most extreme thing out is the nose. So you've got to get the nose set before you can make the rest of the face work. Now Marv Kaiser stats models here and you can see the nose. See how that nose sticks out? Okay, we're going to have the hollow, hollow up here eventually, but the most important part now is to establish the bottom part of that nose. So that's one young lady. That's another one. And there's another one. All right. Now this one here doesn't necessarily apply to the one we've got because there wouldn't be enough uh, wood down below here in order to create that big open mouth that is there. Um, like the either one of these would work, uh, but most this is the one I'm going to use as your example. Now the, take notice of the most important part about this. A woman's nose, especially a young woman's nose, does not have much turn up on the sides. It's nearly flat across. Okay? Nearly flat across. So you can create that shape by using a gouge that has just a slight curve on it. Say about a number five um, or something similar to that. So by putting a, a number five in there uh, number five or maybe a number seven depending on the on the shape of the that you want to create um, if that goes in there to create the bottom shape that would be ideal wouldn't it so I'll just uh, I'll stop it there and then I'll try and get this set up all right so now we've established the bottom shape of the the nose with the with you by using a gouge and so there's the, the roundness on the bottom. You can see that pretty clearly. Now I'm going to turn this sideways. So now I've got to create the depth of the nose. And you'll notice that the nose sits half in and half out of the face. Can you see that? The nose sits half in and half out of the face. So from where the top of the lip is here, out, and from the top of the lip here, in, is more or less equal. Make sense? All right. So now we so in order to accomplish that, and you can see that it isn't it isn't there, and so in order to accomplish that, I've got to remove wood on the side of the the nose on both sides, and I'll use a V tool to do that. So if you can see that, that happens to be a number five seven millimeter. And so, maybe a little bit difficult to see, but I just simply jab, jab that in. <laughs> My hand's going to be in the way. Jab that straight in, so that I create that notch in the bottom. And then you can come up from underneath it, same gouge, just rotate it across, and that creates that shape. I'm not quite deep enough. Can you see the shape there? So try and get it as straight in as you can so that it's not curved one way or the other and then you'll get the symmetry that's required. So uh, that hollow that I made on, on both sides now extends all the way up to the hollow I made in the nose. So I've created the out portion of the nose. So I've created that part of the nose that sticks out from the lip. When I establish the mouth mound, that will create the depth in to the face. All right. So now we're going to work on the smile line. Now the smile line starts to create the mouth mound, but more particularly it finishes off 
the nose. So basically I'm still working on the nose. And you'll notice that the smile line starts at the, the top or the side of the wing. And because she's got a smile on her face, the outside of the lip is turned up. Her, her mouth is turned up on the end. In order to create that, you create this uh, curve in the, the line here. Now it could come out, it could come out and then down, but because she's a lady, typically everything is rounded and smooth. You're going to come out and come down on a curve. So you can mark that on something like that. So that you, you create the shape, and I start it up just a little bit, and I'm going to just do a curve to bring it down. And so how you do that is you use a V-tool, and I'm going to put the V-tool in the side of the nose, and I'm going to turn it slightly so I get a sharper edge towards the top, and then come down. So if I was to do one side, can I do that on here? I'll put it in and curve it down. See how that creates the mouth bone? I'll do the other side and then pass it around. So it looks like that. It doesn't look like very much at the present time, but you can start to visualize the bottom section of the face. And notice that the, it started it started just up into the the side of the nose, not at the bottom of the nose, but up into it. Doesn't it could start up even higher than that if you want? But now I'd like to now that I've got this notch on both sides established. Now I'm going to round that mouth mount all the way around, get a nice round shape to it. Okay, and I'll use a knife to do that. Just come up and start to remove the the wood up and around. Okay. Okay, so there it is with the mouth bone rounded. And it's rounded from the center line all the way around to the uh, smile line. So now, you, I went back to the diagram and I, I drew in the two sides of the nose. Notice that they're curved. Okay, it's, it's a curve goes up towards the brow and so we got to remove in order to create that side of the nose we have to remove the wood on this uh, in this section on both sides that also creates the eye mount so we're still working on the nose so establish the, the pinch or the the width at the top and then Decide on where you want to have the the curve come out. Boy, that's hard to draw, but there you go. Gives you the idea. So I'm going to remove the wood on both sides, and I'm going to use a high-sided gouge on that, or um, I think this is a number nine gouge. Um, it happens to be a nine mil, uh, number nine five millimeter. But that looks like about the size that would work in there. So I'm going to just create a shape in there. And then I'm going to stop it so that I can create the, the hollow for the eye right there. So we're just going to create the shape in there to start with. I'll do that on both sides. If you have difficulty at the top, then take get a gouge that kind of works for you and put it straight in so that then you can come across to that stop cut and remove the hunk of wood. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that and then show you. Main questions uh, when I passed it around was um, what tool to use. I ended up switching and using a, a number 11 four millimeter and I came up the side of the nose and then rounded over the, the side of the eye socket, but that establishes the bridge of the nose in here by removing that, that hunk in there. So now I've got a, got a kind of a pooky nose started there, 
and I haven't shaped the nose, the bottom of the nose yet, but leave as much material in here as you can. Can you see that the cheeks are starting to form there? By removing the wood in here and the wood down below, you created a cheek in here that we're going to be able to work, work on. And again, depending on what, how you created the smile line will depend on how much uh, mouth shape you're going to give it. Now in my uh, carving that I did, I didn't open the mouth. I kept the mouth closed. I gave her that uh, mad looking look. I don't know how to describe that. that so what look. But this girl here, for instance, has got a nice little smile coming. And that can be created in our, you know, that can be created in the, in the feature. But the most important part is to establish the nose. And by doing what we've just done, we've not only established the nose, we've created the cheek and the eye socket here. We've got more work to do, obviously. And eventually we'll taper in on the sides of the eyes and create the bridge. And that again will more emphasize this uh, cheek area here. But that's that'll be next week.